Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and what's next. It's a show that asks questions and peels back the layers of our average everyday experience and goes beyond scratching the surface. We interview people doing incredible things who are making a difference around the globe. Join me as we listen in and get one step closer to understanding that big ideas shared create collaboration. Collaboration can inspire community and communities create social change. I'm David Peck and this is Face to Face. So my next interview is indeed with a very special guest and I'm super excited to have Sarah Pauly here with me today on Face to Face. Her new film, Women Talking, is live and in theaters in the US and it'll be going to a wide release on January 20th, 2023. You can also see it if you're uh, living in the Toronto area, you can see it at the Lightbox, where the Toronto International Film Festival is held. I often say uh, I'm thrilled to have a special guest on the show, but I really, truly am just amazed I was able to get a few minutes with Sarah. Uh, we had a wonderful conversation. I learned a great deal. Uh, she's just she's 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 marvelous. So do listen in, and uh, it's it's a short one, so you won't have to invest a great deal of time. But I promise you, the return on your time investments going uh, to be huge. And I'm looking forward to an opportunity down the road when Sarah and I can have another conversation around uh, this film and and some of the issues that it raises. It's brilliant. It's beautiful. It's memorable. It's going to stick with you. And really, in some respects, it's just the beginning of the conversation. And I think it makes me certainly realize that we have a long, long way to go. Sarah and I talked about uh, something that we often talk about here on Face to Face, the greater good. We, we talked about inspiration. We talked about um, curiosity and, and grief. And we talked about rage and anger and trauma and just how deep some of those wounds go. We talked about uh, imagination and about how this film really just isn't about uh, philosophical deconstruction or social deconstruction. It really is about getting to a better place, getting to another place where we can have continuing conversations, but we can also start to see change of uh, important and particular sorts. So uh, step into this interview uh, with me, this conversation with Sarah, because really, again, that's what it's all about. That's what we try to do here on Face to Face. And make sure you get out to see this film. Uh, it's but she's uh, Sarah's been nominated for a Golden Globe. There's talk of Oscars and, and nominations. It's just brilliant. And again, so thrilled to have her here on the show today. DavidPeckLive.com for more information about my writing and my speaking and also about my podcasting. It's all there. Um, I think we've published 597 uh, interviews. So we're, we're just about to cross the 600 mark. Big changes coming up in 2023. So please do stay tuned. We've got a few more interviews to publish in the not so distant future. And yeah, please, you know what? Sign up where, where you listen to podcasts. Make sure you subscribe. If you're listening to this or watching it on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, like the podcast, please uh, do that for us. We'd appreciate it. And if you have a moment or two, and it really is a moment or two, a review on iTunes or Spotify where you listen to your podcast would be brilliant. Stay tuned. Don't touch that dial. Women Talking with Sarah Polly. The film opens uh, in um, today, December 23rd, if you're listening to this post in the U.S., and it's at the Toronto uh, Lightbox, which is where the Toronto International Film Festival is held, and it's going to go to wide release on January 20th in the new year. Happy holidays. We'll see you again very soon. My name is David Peck, and this is Face to Face. Well, welcome to the show. I can't believe we are back with a very special guest. Sarah Pauly is here uh, with us today to talk about her new film, Women Talking. Sarah, thanks for joining us on the show today. Thank you for having me. Sarah, I, I don't know where to begin. Uh, first of all, I'm going to congratulate you on the, the nominations. How can I not do that? Thank and you. I've, I've been waiting for this conversation for a long time, and I want to say thank you for uh, another brilliant film that you directed away from her as well. Is that what is that a 16 year thank you I've been waiting oh for? Oh my right? God, don't make me feel that old. Yes, I think it is. Oh my God. How does how does time <laughs> fly? I have a I have a 17 year old who just got into university. I don't know. Um, wow. How did how did that happen? I don't know. But my movie's almost as old as he is. And I there was already out when I made him. So I don't want to meet him. <laughs> well, con con congratulations on, on, on a beautiful and, and a compelling film. I'm is it is it wrong? And I want to go here. Is it wrong that I'm listening? I can hear Daydream Believer in the background right now while we're. Oh, that's good. 
Well, <laughs> it, you know what it is? How do you make such a, a beautiful, f compelling, and, and kind of dark film about faith and trauma and truth, and yet maintain that sense of hope? Hmm. I, I mean, I think that was a really, that was a guiding principle from the beginning for me. There's this beautiful monologue that Rooney Mara's character gives that was in the book that Miriam Tapes wrote. Um, and she talks about imagining what kind of world they want to live in. And she says something like, perhaps it would be useful to talk not about, only about what we want to destroy, but also about what we want to build. Um, and that became a kind of guiding principle for me in terms of thinking about this film, that Yes, the women who are in this hayloft debating what to do about the series of attacks on them have been through enormous trauma and harm. But ultimately, what the film is about is, is how they work together and how they process it together and how they move forward and imagine the kind of world they'd like to live in. So I, I couldn't help, my background is in, uh, you know, I've been reading and studying philosophy for years, I couldn't help but think about that sort of postmodern deconstruction you're doing in this film uh, to the patriarchy and to 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 roles gender roles and and, and so on and I, i'm i'm fascinated by that guiding principle it sounds like uh, mm. um, hope and love were kind of a continuous thread for you i think so i also was really interested in you know these women have a very deep faith and instead of sitting back and judging that faith i was really interested in trying to get close to it and meet them on their own terms and express what that faith felt like to them because ultimately I think that's the anchor they have as a community to be able to have this wild imagining of what a world without this kind of harm would look like and how to build it. Do you think the the conversations without giving you know away too much about the film and so on but in the story but do you think do you think the community the conversations they have the sense of urgency and the import of them is, is a testament to the community that they've already built together. Does that make sense? Like, like yeah, I, I mean, feel I the sense that oh, we we weren't educated. Well, hang on a minute here. <laughs> you mm -hmm. guys, you guys have a really good handle on what's happening here, and you're stepping mm -hmm. into your future. You know, you, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's interesting. Um, I do think that everyone is built to be um involved and engaged in a democratic process no matter what your background or how much education you have and certainly in the case of these women you know there are these deep connected relationships and this very intense strong sense of community and of the collective and of the greater good and not just a focus on individualism which i think is what ultimately leads them to be able to imagine a future together because they're not thinking only of their own interests there's a there's a the, the sense of humor that they have the their anger the, the 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 trust i suppose and the truth and the vulnerability of it all i mean for me uh, it seems to me as a as a i hope as a friend and a father and a partner that that that's what it is about, about for me as well would you say that's a real takeaway it's about stepping into relationships that we can trust more that we can be more vulnerable in yeah i mean i think also really trying to understand each other. I mean, I think that in this film, there are women who are having to work alongside each other who fundamentally disagree on some very big okay. things. Oh, yeah. And they have to keep working together and they don't have to agree on every single issue in order to do so. And I guess I sort of feel like we've come to a time where we we do feel that we have to agree on every single issue in order to not just work with people towards progress, but even be in the same room as a person. <laughs> and I feel like what was inspiring to me was this very democratic process that these women go through in trying to find what the common ground is and acknowledging where there are distances and taking responsibility for harms done, not just by uh, by the perpetrators to them, but also what they have done to each other. Um, I found that really exciting about this book and, and really excited about make, making that into a film. It must have been. Did you ever find? Um, hmm, can Can I ask about your melancholic side? Did you ever find? Did you ever find yourself sort of spiraling towards a a more negative interpretation of of the story and the way it's presented? Because I sh I sure don't get that. Even though the the tones are there, it seems. I cool. didn't. I mean, I always saw this as kind of an off ramp for. I mean, I feel like grief and rage are really legitimate places to go, um, in the wake of this kind of trauma and this kind of horror. And I was also really curious about the fact that it offered something else as well. 
like an off ramp and a sense of of building things and of imagining things and of working together to find solutions to things. The phrase uh, "created and ordained by men," I believe, is I think it's your phrase in in the film from the from the screenplay itself. I can't remember the character. I think it's in the book from the book. Yeah. 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 Uh, a more equitable uh, place uh, is is it is it really about that sense of building more of a community, the sense of that continuous thread of love, I suppose, and being there's a, there's a moment where August is told to shut up and listen, <laughs> and mm -hmm. I wonder if that's also sort of a, a bigger theme for for people like me who want to help and kind of in mm -hmm. some respects don't know how. So funny, I, I I remember when I wrote that line that August says, where he says that you know who's the the man in the room who is actually trying to be helpful and trying to make space for the conversation and be of use. And there's this moment of helplessness where he says, you know, I, I want to help, but I don't know how. And I just think so many of us have experienced that moment in the last five to 10 years of, you know, and and hopefully before that of really wanting to know how to be of service and of help with people who have been harmed so deeply and unsure of our place and what is helpful and what's in position and you know, what, when is it important to speak and when is it important to stay quiet and, and finding that out, I think is such a worthwhile use of time. And, and August played by Ben Wishaw on the film does that, does that so meticulously, I think, and beautifully. Yeah, he really does. Uh, I, I hate to say last, last question, and there's not a quick answer to this one, but the stories that you tell, um, <laughs> do, is this about, uh, Richard Wagami said the stories are meant to heal. Is mm -hmm. that why you are a director? Would you say, is it why you tell stories getting mm -hmm. a little bit closer to, to the healing of that trauma and grief and, and that we all seem to be dealing with on some level? That's interesting. Um, I think for me, it's about provoking curiosity. And sometimes that curiosity can be about things that have harmed and therefore maybe about healing. But I think for me, the vehicle is a sense of curiosity and asking questions that have been avoided and having difficult conversations and and being very curious about what might come from that. And, and hopefully, ultimately, there is some kind of healing in that. Well, well, thank you so much for uh, taking you. a few minutes out of your uh, day today. Looking forward to our next conversation and, and seeing where the film goes. Congratulations again, Sarah, and thanks for joining us today on the show. Thank you for such thoughtful questions. I really appreciate it. Oh, you, yeah. you are welcome. And can I say, you now take the place of, well, alongside of Don McKellar, two of my favorite uh, moments in film of all time, the end of last night and the daydream believer scene. Uh, oh, great. Just thank you. Uh, just stunning, astounding. Thank you so much. I mean, what's so weird about the Daydream Believer scene is I just always assumed it was going to end up on the cutting room floor. I kind of couldn't believe they were letting me shoot it. Right. And then I was just waiting for someone to tell me to cut it out, and it never came. Wow. So it's so strange. Sarah, out of the park. It's a gem. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Really appreciate Thank you. it. Thanks so much. Alrighty. Bye bye. Well, there you have it. That was my marvelous but short interview with Sarah Polly. Thank you so much for joining us here on Face to Face. I hope you do get out to see the film. It is indeed brilliant and beautiful, and uh, it's it's one of those films that everyone needs to see and that we're going to be thinking about and writing about for years uh, to come. We really do need to lean in and listen just a little more. Uh, December 23rd, opening in the U.S., January 20th, 2023, opening uh, on a much wider release. You can also see it at the Toronto Lightbox, uh, where TIFF, where the Toronto International Film Festival is held, so check that out if you get a chance. Happy holidays, and don't forget davidpecklive.com for more information about my writing and my speaking, and you can even copy a purchase of my book, Real Change is Incremental there, and we'll look forward to seeing you in 2023. Plenty more coming, some new changes ahead, and please leave us a review. Subscribe to the podcast, of course. Like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, but if you get a chance to leave us a review, we would so appreciate that. Uh, have a great holiday, as I think I've already mentioned. My name is David Peck. And you've been listening to Face to Face.